Hey guys, this is Amir from BikeLikeAPro.com and in today's video we're going to cover VO2 Max. What it is, why is it, why is it important for your cycling performance and what to do to improve it. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so you've probably heard about VO2 Max before. Maybe you've discussed that with your fellow cyclists. Maybe you've uh, already done some kind of VO2 max intervals as a part of your training program. Well, in this uh, video, I'm going to share with you what VO2 max actually is, why it matters, and what we can do to improve it, and how that's going to affect your cycling performance. So, VO2 max is basically the maximum amount of oxygen that we can uh, take in and deliver to our working muscles uh, at submaximal or maximal efforts. VO2 max is usually expressed through uh, in milliliters of oxygen used per minute per kilogram of body weight. So um, usually the high level kind of elite and pro cyclists they will have uh, their VO2 max is going to be about 70 to 80 so that's really high and cyclists are basically some of the uh, you know athletes that are the ranked, the ranked the highest in the world of all sports when it comes to how high their VO2 max can be. So. When it comes to what really what it really means, what VO2 max actually is, basically, put it kind of simply in a very uh, simple terms, VO2 max determines your aerobic endurance potential. Basically, how big is your aerobic engine? That's determined by your VO2 max. Now, when it comes to uh, when it comes to tr how much how trainable it is. I have good and bad news, and that that's going to be based on uh, what level of you know kind of performance you right, you are at right now. So uh, it's said that for unfit or kind of amateur or non-elite cyclists, VO2 max is basically 80% genetically determined, and that leaves a huge 20 20%, which is basically a huge. A potential improvement or area of improvement for you and I'm also going to give you two awesome workouts that you can implement in your training in just a minute here uh, to improve your VO2 max. On the other hand if you are an elite cyclist or maybe you know cat one or two rider or you're a pro maybe in that case you've probably already reached your VO2 max and your uh, the percentage of it that is gen genetically determined is also higher, which means you have a much smaller kind of air window of potential improvement. But still, remembering that about you know one percent difference in performance can, at that high level, can really mean the difference between actually winning the race or being in the top ten, or maybe being somewhere in the middle of the pack. So. Either way, we want to make sure that we implement at least once a week uh, VO2 max intervals in order to improve uh, and, and kind of increase our VO2 max. So I have two really, really great workouts for you here. Uh, and the first rule we're going to follow here is one to one work to rest ratio. OK, so we're going to spend the same exact amount of time at the VO2 max effort and uh, the rest period following it. So the best way to improve your VO2 max and raise it is to perform efforts that are at the VO2 max level. So here's the first workout for you. And one of my favorite workouts to elicit the positive response here. It's going to be three minutes on, three minutes off, right? So we have three minutes at VO2 max effort level and three minutes rest. And then we're going to combine or we're going to repeat that process three times. Now, of course, this workout is going to, uh, I mean, basically, I'm assuming that you have uh, warmed up properly. So 15 to 20 minutes of nice, 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 solid warm up and then several very, very short sprints kind of to get your uh, body and muscles ready for the high intensity effort. And then after that, this is going to be our first workout. And then make sure that after this workout, you also cool down or stretch properly because it is a very high intensity. Now, if you can see here three times three minutes, we basically end up at, if done properly, at nine minutes total time at VO2 max level. This is going to elicit a very, very uh, significant positive uh, response when it comes to improving your VO2 max. Now, 
second workout that I have for you, then again, do not do both of these workouts at the same week. You want to do them once per week. So it's going to be, let's say, week one here, right? And week two is going to be the second VO2 max workout where we're going to do 30 seconds on and 30 seconds off, right? Now, if you see here, we have a much shorter interval, so 30 seconds of effort at the VO2 max level and 30 seconds rest, and we're going to combine this 10 times, right? So you can see here that 10 times half a minute basically equals five minutes, right? Five minutes of total time at VO2 max level. Now, this is going to be somewhat easier, but because we have a higher number of of these sets, uh, it's still going to be pretty hard. Now, when you just start, if you've never done VO2 max efforts before, I highly suggest that you go into this very, very uh, slowly, gradually, and just be smart about it. So you don't want to say, oh, this is awesome, VO2 max efforts, great, I'm just going to go and do, you know, 100 of these or do them until I fall off my bike. So basically be very smart and be very careful about it because these are very high intensity workouts that elicit a lot of uh, and require a lot of C, uh, central nervous system involvement as well. So after this number of repetitions of these sets, or you know, after you repeat these sets this many times, you'll get mentally tired as well. And then remember, when your central nervous system is tired, that's basically when you need to stop your workout because beyond that, you're not going to have any positive gains. So um, that's the VO2 max kind of story for today. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the uh, comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video.